Okay. We'll try this again. My battery died. The last one. Are you good this time? We're doing a, a mini lesson on Google. Just getting logged in, getting used to navigation, all that kind of stuff. Up here on the screen, I've written down for you. This is for your school account. I know when we first started um, learning about Google a couple, gosh, three, four, five years ago already. Um, we created like our own account with Kemper.org. Remember that? I still have that one account too, but now I count that as my personal account, and this is my school account. And I live in this account though. I've had stuff from my personal account shared into this account so I can just stay in this account and not go in my personal one as much. Um, right now, Gmail is not allowed. Um, Phil has that turned off. But we are discussing turning that on for teachers. The kids have it, and we have it for the teachers. The original thought, I think, when they first decided, he and uh, Joe um, discussed it. Um, at the time, Google wasn't able to archive, meaning for liability purposes, you need to be able to archive and save our emails in case we're ever sued or whatever. And I think that has since changed. But we never really tried both per se, I don't think. I think we just kind of said, well, maybe that's too much. But I personally want to go to it too. We're talking about ways that we can then maybe get rid of our regular email and just live in Gmail. Because I know like our webmail is awful, you know, unless you know their email address or say that it's hard to really work in that environment at all. So that's some of the things we're discussing, but um, to log into your school account, it's your first initial of your first name, your first initial of your middle name, your last name, and then at students.camper.org. So mine is mjtrent at students.camper.org. Okay, so that's the first step. Your first initial, middle initial, last name at students.camper.org. Now your passwords to get in this account should be the same as how you log on to your computer at school. Um, they have it such that if you forget, and this goes for students, if they forget how to log into Google, what they need to do is they need to change how they log into the computers here at school. Because they have it set so that it automatically then changes that Google password too after like a few minutes. Sometimes it's pretty instant, sometimes it's one or two minutes. But that's nice so that they can go and change their password to something else and it automatically changes for Google too. So that way, you know, having tons and tons of passwords is not a good idea anyway. Having a couple that you use is good. Like I have a personal one and I have a professional one. And sometimes those cross, but I really try to keep them separate. <laughs> so is it okay for your Gmail, my Gmail and my studentsitecover.org? That's fine. Yeah. The biggest thing too with passwords and stuff, it's okay to have, you know, use the same one over and over, but what's really important is to have a good password. And a good password has a capital letter, it has between 8 and 12 characters, it has a number in it somewhere, and possibly not a real English word. You know, maybe it's a gobbledygook. Mine is like two English words put together in a number and a capital letter. Um, and as long as you do something like that, you're good. I wouldn't get anything over 12 characters because then it's just crazy to remember that. But somewhere between 8 and 12, you should be good with any, anything to log into. And in fact, I'm going to start changing my personal one again too. Personal ones, like I use for banking and bill paying and stuff, I do change those like once a year just to be on the safe side. So I'm not ready to change anything. Okay, so let's get ahead and get logged into your Google account then if you haven't already. Click sign in. Does anybody not even get in? And also, using Chrome is the best browser to use with Google. Chrome is a Google product. Therefore, they play really nice with each other. Is it okay if you don't use Chrome? It is okay, but I'm going to tell
tell you weird things happen if you don't use Chrome. Like, for instance, if you go to try and print, or maybe you're putting in a picture, or something like that, sometimes it doesn't always work. So that's when you want to try Chrome instead. So, so I do I have to sign into Chrome? You don't have to sign into Chrome, no. That's just over there.
like for instance, um, these people have like, for instance, this uh, Lynn McCartney, these other folks are in her circle. So we have six in common. Like I have these folks, these are my AA folks, by the way. And Lynn, I have not added her yet into that, but I will. And so I can add her in my circle then. And so we have circles of different people. So like a AA circle. I have a like Bill Nancy myself circle, which we don't really use very often either, but we could. But this is something that you might want to take a little time with today too and just kind of play around with we'll play with that a little bit too. So how did you get how did I get to be in Google Plus? I don't remember that. Because um, you have I to think have Google Plus first to do a hangout, right? Right, right. And see like here I can continue to Google Plus there. And Google Plus then looks like this. And this is what I don't really care for. They suggest topics for you go through and hide them and stuff like that. That's what I did like because it was like a lot of cleanup for me to just do what I want to do in there. And I didn't really care for that as much. But you can share pictures and videos and all kinds of stuff, just like Facebook through this too. But they let you know that these are some things that I might be interested in and I'm really not interested in. Okay, if I already things. have pictures on here, did my computer just automatically have them? Yeah, if you, it's in conjunction with your Google Drive and if you use like Picasso, do you use Picasso? I do. And that's why. It pulls pictures from your Picasso account and puts them in here. But yeah. This is not my favorite thing, I'm just going to say too. I'm not a big fan. The only time I use this stuff is when, we, and when I'm asked to be part of a Google Hangout. That's the only time I've used it. Okay, I'm going to go back up here to the very top where it says search. Click that search, please. This is your Google search. Okay, um, Nancy is going to be doing a mini lesson no, tomorrow. Tomorrow and Saturday when we come in for our workshop time, she's going to share with you um, some special ways to search that she learned at iTech. And uh, we had a great keynote speaker. Hit the back button. Jeannie hit the back button too. There you go. Do you see search now? Okay, that's where we are. And search, there's lots of different ways you can do some searches and things of that nature. Um, some quick, easy things too. If you type in, like for instance, define and a, cor and a colon, and then you could say any word like volcano, space there, it comes up automatically with a definition right away. So anything you put define and colon comes up. Um, there's some other specific ones too that she'll show you tomorrow. I can't it's spell volcano right, but that's <laughs> an extra E at the end. I'm kind of like that, um, what was that old McDonald commercial, that E-I-E-I-O thing? Yeah, to add extra vowels and stuff at the end. <laughs> um, so stay tuned to that search. We're going to be videotaping that as well. So that'll be out there too if you can't make the, the Tuesday night mini session. And then Saturday morning, we're just going to, Nancy's not going to be here, but we're going to just play the video then show that to her face, so everybody gets to see. Next is images, way across the top. And again, these are Google images. And remember, these are not copyright free, which means that you need to cite them. And so do students. You can't tell kids, go on the internet and search for a picture, print it off and turn it into me if you don't have them cited. You can't have them put a picture in any projects. Word documents, PowerPoints, anything until, and then you need to have them cite it. And is it okay to just copy the, the website and paste it in? No, not anymore. We learned that, that we were doing that the wrong way. And so you need to use either Doodle Tools will help you, Doodle Tools Express helps you to do a bibliography, or, um, and use uh, Purdue Owl gives you examples of the correct way to cite for for the lower grades when you're ready to do something like that, let me know. I, we have that breakdown of that document I sent out earlier this year that kind of breaks down the steps for the lower grades, how to do it. But that way we're on the right track to citing correctly and not just putting a URL in. Because that's not enough. But plots, this is very, very rich. Lots of different examples. However, you have to be careful because things come up, even though we have filters, things still come up because there's still some folks out there that like to put innocent terms with not so innocent pictures. So just be careful. I would never advise kids to just go out and do a Google search an image. I would
would check it out myself first. Give them some good keywords to use to search those out. And talk to them about if they come across an inappropriate picture, what do you do? Um, you know, close it out quick and hope to God nobody saw you? No, you need to tell the teacher, you know, leave it up, tell the teacher so she can deal with it appropriately. Because sure enough, you know, we'll tell the kids, you know, if, if you try to cover it up, it's gonna look like you're guilty. You know, whether if you just report it, then, you know, you're gonna be sitting a lot better. Going across, now we have drive next. And drive used to be called just docs. Do you remember that? Now it's called drive. And Google Drive houses all of your documents. Okay, your Google Docs. That Google Spreadsheet, Google Presentation, Google Docs, Forms, uh, Pictures. You can save pictures here too. Uh, you can save uh, videos and things here too. So there's this is all of your docs. And, and you notice that mine right now, you see where it says red, where it says red there? It says that's recent. Mine are sorted right now by the most recently I've used. You can click on the different options. Like I, if I click on my drive, then all of my folders that I have come up first. And then my documents. I tend to like to leave it on recent because I have a lot of stuff here. And it can be a little bit of a pain to organize everything. Um, yes, there's Bacon Fest. Yes, we had Bacon Fest in our, week, our house this weekend. And my health screening tomorrow probably will reflect it. But it was really good, by the way. I'm just saying. Um, lots of crazy things made with bacon. Um, but anyway, so these are, again, you can see that they're different colors. Okay, so those top three ones, those are spreadsheets. These blue ones, those are documents. Those are docs. These are presentations. Um, this is a copy of a document. Here's another spreadsheet. You can tell kind of by the icon in front of it what it is. And then over here on the left where it says create, if you click that, and we're going to get into this next, uh, on Thursday, we're going to be playing right around in here, creating the documents, the spreadsheets, the presentations. And then I'm coming up next week, we're doing forms. Because forms is very, very uh, useful. And we want to make sure that we have a lot of time for you to play and create your own forms. You can create quizzes for kids on here. And it grades, you can grade them so quickly and easily because their answers come into a spreadsheet. You can look right down who's got them right, who doesn't, and grade it and be done. Forms are awesome. Um, so you notice that mine, uh, I have a few more things than you do, probably, right? Yeah. Why is that? Did you um, go back to the four apps? Yes. When you go to, when I use, we're using Chrome, because Chrome, you can walk, get along the best. In the Chrome store, I have apps that I've downloaded that are, that go into my drive. And so things like, I mean, apps are also web pages or online software. So MindMap, for instance, that MindMap is actually MindMeister. And that's a website where you can do collaborative, um, oh, like a brainstorming activities. It's cloud, you know, you type in an idea and somebody else types in one, so you can work on it all together. And so, and same thing with like Pixlr Express. This is a website that edits photos, but it puts it in my drive too so that I can, it's not all the apps, just certain ones go on your drive. No, I see here that it says folder. Does that mean this is where you're supposed to make the new folders now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. In Google, not in your documents. Don't get confused. Now, we're not in your documents right now, like you're, like, you know, on your computer. This is up in Google. Yes. This is how you can create folders in Google. And we're going to do that, and then we're going to share it with each other. And we're going to show you how that works, too. Okay? So that's the kind of makeup there. And then like down below here, it says my drive. That's everything in my drive shared with me. So if somebody shares a document with you and they say, did you get my document? And you're like, uh, where is it at? It's under shared with me. So if somebody shares a document with you, it's going to show up under shared with me. So where is shared with me at? Right, right below. So I mouse off of the create button, the G in there. Move your mouse off of create. And click someplace else in the white space. Yeah, you just click new folder by accident. Just say cancel there. Cancel. There. Now do you see where it says shared with me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Your create was covering it up. Okay. And then 
things that are important. You can put starred items. You can star certain things if they're real important or specific. Recent is next, and then there's more. And more tells you that there's you can do activities, all items, trash is also listed there <coughs> more, and owner type and more. So you can also do some sorting of finding things by who owns it, the type of document, that kind of thing. So that's just kind of the layout of, of the Google Docs. Your docs are all here, right here at tell, these are the name of your documents. Here's the owners of them. And this is when they're last opened. And then over here is a way for you to sort. These are kind of ways to view them. If you want to switch to a list or if you want to switch to a grid, most people keep them in a list like this. Okay, so that's just kind of the layout. You see over here too that I have a picture associated with my account. You can do that if you want. You just go in that, there's a little carrot right next to my, my name there. You can go into your account and upload a picture of yourself if you'd like. Okay, so any questions on the layout so far of Google Drive? All right, let's click Create, for instance, and let's go ahead and create a folder. Create and then click Folder. Let's give it a name. I'm just going to call mine Test because I always call mine Test the ones that I plan on deleting. And then click Create. Are we also supposed to do the same thing? Um, no. I would do something different, like Test Dynamating or Test Mary Trend is amazing, rocks, you know, whatever. You know, whatever you feel comfortable. And do you notice that it put it in the line with all of my other folders over here? Do you see that? Yep. Do you see yours that you just created? It may not. Okay. So at the end of that, do you see that there's, when I mouse over, there's a little carrot at the end of it. Do you see that that points down? A little arrow points down. Click that arrow. So it's right or left? Left. When I do, this menu comes up. And now I have different options to choose from that. That little carrot right next to where it says folder. Your folder should be over here. Library. Like, you can create that folder name library. Okay. So right there where she's got it. See that little carrot is? Yeah, click that. All right. So there's this menu now. Open, open with, new folder. So you can create a folder within a folder. Okay. And folders under folder. Folder within folder. And then it says share. You see that where it says share? Mm -hmm. Go down and click on that for a minute, please. And then share again. Share and then share. You see that? Yep. Click that. And this screen should come up for right Left or right click? It's always left you. Okay. Never right, not mine. there too. 
two of the people that I want to share this with. Then down below that, it says done to. Okay, so let's go back up here for a second, right up here where it says who has access. And right now, remember it says private, and there's that change. Click change, please. Click change. All right, here's the nuts and bolts of it, okay? Going at, down the top, the very first one says public on the web, and then it's got a little disclaimer underneath, but it tells you what it is. Public on the web is anyone on the internet can find and access, no sign-in required. So that's very public, right? Anyone can get at this folder. Do we really want that most of the time? No. no. Probably not. I have never done anything that public before, and I, I don't mind sharing a lot of my stuff. The next one says, anyone with the link, and then it says, anyone who has the link can access no sign-in required. I happen to use this one the most, and let me tell you why. I can share whatever I'm doing with anyone, students, teachers, parents, my family members, and they don't have to have a Google account to work in whatever document we're doing together. Case in point, I have a big family. We have holidays. It's every, every one of us takes a turn organizing it. We're 50 plus or so. And so it's quite an undertaking and you have to assign people what they're gonna bring. So I create a Google Doc and for a sign up, half of my sisters have it, half don't have a Google account. It doesn't matter because everyone can access it, fill it in as long as they have a computer and the internet. That's the only requirement. Okay, so I tend to like that one a lot. I can email the link. I can, you know, copy and paste it. Remember that blue link we were talking about? Yes. That's the link I'm talking about. We'll go back to that in a minute here. But you can copy that link and paste it. You can put it in email, all kinds of things. So the next one says Kemper Catholic School System. It says people at Kemper Catholic School System can find and access. That means that if you're in the Kemper system, you have an absolutes.kemper.org email or Google account, you can get on Google and type in that name of that folder and you'll find it. And you can access it. Okay? That's used quite often. But like I said, I tend to use that anyone with a link just in case. I work with people outside of our school a lot too. The next one says people at Kemper Catholic with the link. People at Kemper Catholic System have, who have the link can access. So now that's different from the one before. The one before, we can search it out and find it. Now this one, I can only access it if I have the link and I'm in the Kemper System. So that makes it a little more private, doesn't it? Okay. You can really have to email it to those certain people. Yeah. <coughs> they have to have that link and they have to be part of our Kemper System. So that really makes it nice and private still anyone in the school system can get at it. Now the last one there, it says private. Only the explicit, explicitly granted permission can be accessed. Sign in required. That's uber private. That means that this document can only be shared with someone that you put their email address down and they have to have a Google account to get in. Okay? Really restricted. Okay, so just for giggles, will you please click anyone with the link? And I want you to notice that things changed down here when I did that. Look up here, it changed right here. Now it says, when I click that anyone with the link, now it says access. Anyone, no sign required, can view. And then there's a little carrot there. What that means is that anyone that I share that link with right now can only view whatever document, can only view the items in that folder we're creating, okay? They can't edit it, they can't do anything with it other than look at it, okay? If I click that carrot, that down arrow, and now I have more options, can edit. That means that anything I stick in this folder, you folks, whoever I share it with, those folks can edit any document I put in there. Which, 
as a teacher, if you're working collaboratively with your team and you're devising something together, that's awesome. If you're sharing stuff with students, not so much probably, because they can delete everything and you know and go from there. So if you want to share with students, you want to do can view. So let's just change that to can view for right now. And then click save. So right now, we are anyone with a link can view the items in the folder that we've created. Everybody got that so far? Okay. Now, remember we talked about that blue link right here? You see that blue link? Now what I can do is I can copy that link because in that link, it holds the privacy rights. Meaning we've changed that link by changing who can see it and what they can do with this document, this folder. Or we can just type in people's names down here. Let's just type in each other's names down here, okay? And watch what happens when I start typing, for instance, Jean Guy, I know she's G-A-M, and then, oh, look what happens. Because it, we're in the Kemper system, their email addresses start showing up. So you don't have to know all of their name or all of their email address, they just show up. You can type in their last name, too. See, I type in Willenberg, and then it shows up. And you kind of have to scroll down. You see this right here, this little scrolly thing on the right? I kind of have to scroll down so you can see your cursor so you can type in another one. Um, and scroll down a little bit with that little scrolly thing. I want you to 
you click with, hmm, where are we going to find this at in your drive? Recent. Not recent. Let's try it anyway. It might show up in recent. There's another place to look. If it doesn't, hit the save. Recent my Done. drive is my drive. If oh. I shared it with you, oh. Oh. where would it be? Share with there was a plus on the top that says new folder. Okay, so that was shared, but wouldn't it be under shared with me? Yep, so click under shared with me. And you see that I have Diane Bates folder has been shared with me. Do you see that? Did anybody else include me? No? That's all right. I did. Oh, yeah, you did. I got yours. I have library test test at New York. Great. Okay, so. If I click on Diane's folder right now, do you see somebody else's folder in here? Do you see mine in there, guys? Yes. Okay. If I click on Diane's folder right now, it's what? Empty. Empty. Because we haven't put anything in. She hasn't put anything in her folder to share with me yet, right? You guys haven't put anything in there either. So we can add stuff to our folder right now. And not only will I have it, but whoever I shared that folder with will have my document too. So look up here then, okay? I'm going to go under create and I'm going to create a document. So just watch this for just a second. Oh, I just read a link. I want to get out of this. I'm going to go to my drive. Then create a uh, document. So I'm going to create a document here. Okay, and I'm going to save the document. I'm going to call it test. How are you? So now, do I have to share it? What do I do with this? I want to put it in that folder, right? Yep, so I want to put it in that folder. All right, so what I can do then is I can go back to my drive. I'm done with that document for now. I'm going to go to recent because I just created it. See that right here? Now I want to put it in that folder I just created. That was under, that was the one I created, so it's my folder, and I want to put it under test. Remember that's the name of it? So if I move this into test and let go, it's in that folder. Now, look in your folder right now. Look in your folder right now that I shared with you called test. I should be under shared with you. And you should have a folder well, can I use the right there. Click there. Just click on test there. See that folder that says test? Library, the test, and I'm Yeah. Now, you see the document? You see the document? Yep. Can I click, click that right in? Um, no, just want to click right on the thing. Just one, one click. Just one. Just kind of double click, just click. So now, you guys all see the same document I created, right? Okay, so let's open it. Click on it. Can you type in here? Sure. Can you answer that question? Yes. Well, unless it's not in. Did you ask saying we can edit it? Who did I say could edit? Me. So um, Diane typed something. Do you see Diane typing? Live. I can add stuff too. Do you see that? You can see me typing in there. Because I'm logged into Google, you can see who we are. Do you see us up there? These D's, the J, there's Diane's picture, there's a J. And when I mouse over it, we can see who's in this document. Okay? Okay, like when Ted creates our weekly. If you're not logged into Google, you are anonymous. If you're logged into Google, your actual name shows up at the top. So that's what he sees. Is that what yes. I see? Yes, you'll see that as well. If you're logged into Google, you'll see that as well. Gotcha. Otherwise, you're anonymous if you're not logged in. Now, we'll get into this a little bit on Thursday too, but you can, you as students, though, still can, can do stuff with this document. Let's pretend that this
this is a worksheet. And you don't want your students to edit the original one, but you want them to have a copy of it so that they can do stuff on their own and not mess up the original, right? Especially like if you have groups, you know, if you have groups and you have, all right, groups, I want you to fill out this form, but I don't want all of you to work at the same time because that's going to mess things up. Okay, so what you can do is do exactly what we did. Share it with them as only they can view it. And then if they go up to file and make a copy, now they make a copy of it and now they can edit it as theirs. So that way they're not working in the original at all. They're working in a copy of the original. And that works so nice when you're doing group stuff. Okay, yeah, I'll see you on Thursday, G. The uh, date? Maybe even tomorrow. Okay. A little bit. We'll see you tomorrow. Or a little bit. I okay. got nothing to do with it. Sounds good. Yeah. I know it's a busy time of year. So, those are some things that we're going to be practicing and doing the next few. I have like three or four of these sessions coming up. And basically, I'm just giving you a little tips, a little at a time. The biggest thing, like I said, if you can figure out that sharing and just what that is for those accesses stay underneath of it. Once you get that, then it doesn't matter if you're a document or presentation or spreadsheet. You get how this is shared with other people, and then you can work in that. Questions so far on sharing? Okay, I'm going to give you a little work time, like five minutes or so. I want you to create another document. And I want you to share it with somebody. Now, just a document, not a folder. So, how do we get out of there? Okay. okay. If you want to get back to your drive, you mouse over to that left hand side and then you click that blue triangle. That triangle, that's blue square with the white triangle in it, that takes you back to your drive. Yep, that's right, Diane. All right, so now create a document. Create in document. And just share it with one other person. Remember, you gotta save it too, right? And to save it, you just click in where it says Untitled Document and type in a name. And then just type some little sentence and share it with somebody close by. That way you can play with sharing. And we're gonna continue this on Thursday. Kind of picking up right from here. So uh, we'll talk about the sharing and creating documents and stuff. So if you're interested in learning more about that, bring a friend too and um, We'll do more sharing. So after we type, do we go yeah, no, share? Save it. Now, good point. Okay, here we go. Good, good question. Okay, so you typed something. Or maybe you didn't even type anything yet. That's the beauty about a Google Doc. You don't have to do anything in it, but you can give it a name and you can share it. So to save it, I said save it, I should say give it a name. Right up here where it says untitled document, click that. Oh. That's where you give it a name. Google saves automatically every few seconds. So there really is no save per se. Okay. Once you have a name there, then you want to share it with somebody. Share is in the top right hand corner. Click OK, Deb. Now share is in the top right hand corner. Click share. All right. Right now it should be defaulted to private, right? You can type someone's name in, which I would recommend you doing since you're just sharing it with a neighbor right now. So type it in at the bottom. So type it in at the bottom. Yep. And what rights are you going to give them? Just remember to the right right can't now edit. it says can edit. So think about how you want to send that to someone. We're just playing right now. So once you click share and save that green button, then their name pops up at the top and it's added to whoever is using it. Can comment is another option too. That means that they can leave comments on the documents too, which we'll get into on Thursday. They can't do anything else that they can add comments. Now click share. Yep, and now, now remember that their name should be up the top. You could also email that link out if you want to share it with other people too, right? Mm -hmm. Now click done. And then go back to your drive. Remember how to go back to your drive? Yep, top left. Good. Click share and share. save. There you go. Um, I, I already um, heard. Let me check something.
Now check your share. Oops. Who should you check? Uh huh. Share. share it with me in your Google Drive, right? Okay. Because someone just shared a document with you. Someone shared okay. questions with you. But they won't let me write in the Have you tried? So, did you get one? You click in there and type. No. Who shared that with you, Mary Jane? I said, did you get what I wrote to you? We so you can comment. Diane. So put a comment oh, in. Oh, no. But you, you put Diane. Yeah. So you can comment. So you can comment. comment. Yeah. mess with the actual document, but you can comment oh, on what you think I about see. Mary Jane's document. Which we don't know what was. This is pretty <laughs> So we got this, right? This is pretty <laughs> And you got mine. She's harsh. Well, you knew that was coming, right? Yeah. You knew that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Exclamation point. Right. This so now, where lame. did anybody share anything with Mary Jane? Here. Comment. That's, oh, so that's your there? document. Yeah, okay. it stays there. See, now she can see now your comments. Oh, she saw my comment. You can put a comment, too, this if you'd like. This is lame. Okay. So you can click reply right there. Okay. So this is, that right, comment you. is awesome for kids when they're writing papers. And you're helping was them edit it. Was that listed underneath, um, where was that listed? That's under the, the permissions. That was at the bottom. When you type their name in, it was can view, can edit, oh, okay. kind and then comment was another comment. option. Now she would do I that is it. nice. Oh, that, we got a war, war, war going on here. That's right. <laughs> okay. How are you doing? Good. Is this supposed to be this one? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can close that stuff out too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we went in a lot of stuff. Oh. Yeah. So, oh. you guys share with each other? Yes. We both have. Can you found it? Yes. Awesome. Takes one to know one. Good deal. All right, Period. Now, that. that that okay. is our time for the oh. day. I want oh, to separate oh, oh, this. Oh, no. This is We're totally going to go all night here. long. We're getting started So here. Thursday we'll continue more of the same and ah, learning more about Google and Docs. Did you just say this is fun? Awesome. It is fun. It's just right now I feel 